Hello and welcome back. Uh, this is going to be uh, the first video now on uh, the section on measures of variability. So here we're going to be looking at uh, really the shape and the spread, uh, as you say, the shape of the distribution. So the you can picture the shape of the histogram uh, that corresponds with the frequency of observations. Uh, and, and so this is really going to be describing the spread of observations uh, from the mean and how they spread out from there. Some are larger, some are smaller. So there's a number of different measures uh, that, that we'll look at. In this exercise, I've, I've got a few. Uh, I'm going to try to keep my videos uh, relatively short here. So I think for this first video, I'll just go through A and B. Uh, because part C and uh, part C really will take a fair bit of time. It's a, a relatively long, somewhat tedious calculation to go through. So, so let's here just keep it uh, keep it short uh, for parts A and B. So what what we have here, I've I've taken a reduced sample of uh, of student grades for first year principles of of macro class. I'm going to try to start keeping my samples small again because going through these calculations now uh, they can be really long and tedious. So we'll work with um, unrealistically small samples just to keep the math uh, as simple as possible and as quick as possible. So let's start off uh, with part A. So here I have uh, a data set, I've already got it sorted, so we're already going from the smallest to the largest value, so that helps make things a little bit easier. You know, anytime you're doing these types of problems by hand, the first thing you should always do is just sort it out, because it can be helpful for a number of different uh, types of problems that you might be facing, such as the first one, compute the range. The range is probably the easiest uh, the most simplistic measure of the spread of observations. All you need to consider for the range uh, is the difference between the largest value uh, and the smallest value. So all we need are the, the two endpoints. And if I already have this data sorted from smallest to largest, well, they're easy to spot. So my range here is simply 91 minus 37 and so I'm going to get my calculator and 91 minus 37 is 54 so my range is 54 of course you know your question is well, what does that mean you know, well, the nice thing about the range uh, is that it's measured in the same units of measurement as your data so our data here these are all percentages 37 percent 47 percent and so on so the range uh, will be measured in percentage points so th what this tells us is the difference between the highest score in the class and the lowest score in the class or at least in this sample uh, is 54 percentage points. So that's the extent of the spread. That's the range of values. Okay, so we have our range is 54. Okay, the next one is also a measure of range, although it's a little bit more refined. Here we use our knowledge of quartiles and we'll calculate the interquartile range. So as you may recall, a quartile um, is what we use to separate the data into quarters. And we had used a, a formula to calculate an index value. So an index value, this is just the, the number that states the position of the observation in when it's sorted like this from smallest to largest. So the index value uh, is calculated as the percentile of interest in this case, we're looking at quartiles, so that's only 25th percentile, 50th percentile, and 75th percentile. So the formula is the percentile of interest over 100 times uh, our sample size. Okay. So if we're looking at uh, wanting to calculate the interquartile range, let's just abbreviate that as the IQR. This is simply the difference between the third quartile and the first quartile. So unlike the range, which tells us the, small, the, the difference between the smallest value and the largest value, and how far the data set is spread, the interquartile range now tells us how far spread is really the middle 50%. 
because if we look at what the quartiles are describing, let's first calculate our, our indices. So for the uh, Q3, so that would be, I'm going to look at this one here, that would be the 75th percentile divided by 100 times our sample size here is uh, 8. So just to be thorough, if we put this into our calculator, this is 75 divided by 100 times 8. So this gives us a value of 6. So my sixth observation, let me just add some index values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So the 70 is my sixth, but when we're calculating these percentiles or quartiles, if that index is an integer, so our whole number, then the percentile is the middle between the ith, or in this case the sixth uh, value, and the i plus one value, which would of course in this case be the seven. So my, my third quartile is going to be that value right in between the sixth and seventh observation. So let's, uh, let's just figure out what that is. This is going to be, oh, we can probably do that one in our head. 70 plus 80 divided by, oops, not divided by 5, divided by 2, so 75. So this is 75. And substituting these values in for my IQR, this is uh, 75 minus Q1. So if we go through the same exercise again for Q1, this is 25 over 100 times 8. This will be I equals 2. And so I want to find that difference between uh, I equals 2 and 3. So I'm going to be right here. And that will be the difference Let's see, 60 plus 47 divided by 2, so 53.5. So before we go much further, if we look at what, this, what these quartiles are telling us, that first quartile, remember that's my first quartile or my 25th percentile, what that means is that 25% of my observations are less than or equal to uh, that 25th percentile. So there's 25% of my observations there. The 75th percentile, or third quartile, means that 75% of my observations are less than or equal to that value. Less than or equal to 75. What that means is that 25% are then greater than or equal to. So when we're calculating the interquartile range, we're sort of cutting out the lowest 25% and the largest 25%. And so we're looking at just what is the, the range of the middle 50% of our observations. And in this case, if I look at the difference between 75 and 53.5, 21.5, so this difference here, 21.5, that tells me really the, the range, we call it the interquartile range between the first and the third quartile. So that's the range of the middle 50% of my data. Okay, so here we've gone through, we've got the, the range, so the, the full spread from smallest to largest value of our data set. We calculated that, here is 54. And now we have our interquartile range, which is just the range of the middle 50% of the data. Okay, so I'm going to end this video now as promised. So we've gone through A and B. Uh, I'm going to start with a fresh slate and uh, go through C, D, and E. Uh, C, calculating these variances can be a little bit long and tedious. Uh, so you're welcome to fast forward through part of that video if you like, but uh, that's where we'll begin. Okay, thanks for watching.